Ever wondered why a single vote can shake the world stage? One such vote was cast by Judge Julia Sebutinde at the International Court of Justice in the Israel-Gaza case. This particular case was a global focal point, a heated controversy where South Africa accused Israel of genocide in its campaign in Gaza, imploring the court to halt the onslaught. The court's decision made by a panel of 17 judges was to impose six provisional measures aimed at safeguarding Palestinians in Gaza. This ruling was overwhelmingly approved by the majority of the judges. Even an Israeli judge supported two out of the six measures. But against this tidal wave of consensus, one dissenting voice emerged. Uganda's judge, Julia Sebutinde, was the lone judge who voted against these measures. In the face of overwhelming agreement, Sebutinde stood alone. But who is this audacious woman? Born in Uganda in 1954, Julia Sebutinde went on to become the first African woman to sit on the ICJ. From a modest family, she grew up amidst Uganda's struggle for independence from the British colonial office. Her educational journey began at Lake Victoria Primary School in Entebbe, Uganda, followed by Gayaza High School. She later earned her law degree from Makarere University at a tender age of 23. At 36, she journeyed to Scotland, earning a Master of Laws degree with distinction from the University of Edinburgh. The same university later honored her with a doctorate of law, acknowledging her substantial contributions to legal and judicial service. Before her election to the ICJ, Sabutinda served as a judge of the Special Court for Sierra Leone, having been appointed in 2007. Her professional journey was marked by numerous accolades, but it was not without its share of controversies. Her journey to the ICJ was marked by determination and excellence, but it was not without controversy. De Sebutinde's career has been marked not only by groundbreaking achievements, but also by a fair share of controversies. One of the most notable was her role in the trial of former Liberian President Charles Taylor, charged with war crimes committed in Sierra Leone. Taylor was found guilty on 11 counts, including war crimes, crimes against humanity, terrorism, murder, rape, and the use of child soldiers, resulting in a 50-year prison sentence. However, the trial wasn't without its dramatic moments. London barrister Courtney Griffiths, who represented Taylor, dramatically walked out of proceedings after judges declined to accept a written summary of his client's defense. A disciplinary hearing for Griffiths was indefinitely adjourned because Sebutinde declined to be present, withdrawing on principle. These controversial decisions Sebutinde made during the trial had far-reaching consequences, but her most recent vote at the ICJ has raised new questions. Sebutinde's vote at the ICJ against measures in the Israel-Gaza case has sparked debate, but what does this mean for Africa? This question has left many pondering. As the first African woman to sit on the ICJ, Sebutinda's decision carries weight. It's not just a vote, it's a statement that reverberates across the continent. Her vote could potentially influence Africa's stand on international disputes. It raises questions about Africa's role in global justice and how it navigates international relations. It also sparks conversations about Africa's unity. Could this vote, seen by some as aligning with the West, interrupt Africa's plan for unity? Could it create divisions within the continent? These are important questions for Africa as it continues to define its place in the world. As the continent grapples with these issues, Sebutinde's vote serves as a reminder of the critical role Africa plays on the global stage. As the dust settles on Sebutinde's controversial vote, the world watches to see what the ripple effects will be for Africa and beyond. If you like this video share and subscribe for more. Don't forget the notification button for an update.